Hello, good. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Deepak, and today in this session we'll be doing the clinical consultation. And may I know, uh, is there any doctor here who have got the slot for the exam for going to appear in the next diet? Okay, all right. So in this session, we'll be doing clinical consultation. Uh, we'll do it, try to do at least two cases. And once the cases are done, we'll go through the sequence of history taking, the examination sequence, and how to address the concerns, how to give the clinical uh, differential diagnosis, okay, and whatever is related to that particular case. Uh, would anybody like to take the case? Would anybody like to volunteer? Dr. Santosh Kumar, would you like to volunteer? Hello. Hello. Sorry, it had got disconnected. Uh, would anybody like to volunteer? I would need somebody to volunteer the case. Uh, I'll, I'll volunteer. Okay, okay, that's good. Uh, may I know your name, doctor? Yeah, my name is Raja. Okay, all, all right. Okay, I'll put on the case here. I'll share my screen. Okay. Have you given the exam before, doctor? No, 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 never tried. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, this is your case. Uh, you can take uh, three minutes to prepare. After that, we'll start. So this is a clinical consultation case. You have got 15 minutes here with the patients. Okay, so in the 15 minutes, you are going to take the full detailed history. After that, you will be asking for the relevant examination. And if there's any particular finding, I'll be saying that the findings to you. And after that, mm. five minutes, we'll spend with the examiners. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, I'll I'll keep the timer here. Your three your three minutes starts now. Yeah, I can start. Uh, so good evening. My name is Tiaga, uh, Raja here. So uh, I'm one of the doctors here. So can I uh get a history and uh, examine you, uh, Mrs. Jennifer? Hello, doctor. You can take three minutes to prepare, or you want to start? Uh, I can start. Yes. You want to start? Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll keep the timer. Okay. We can start. Yeah. So, uh, good evening, Mrs. Jennifer. I'm Raja here, one of the doctors. So, uh, today, okay. can I just ask uh, some history and uh, examine you uh, if it's okay? Yes, doctor. Sure. Uh, so, uh, may I know what, what, what brings you here to the hospital or clinic session? Doctor, you know, since last two months, I feel weak, doctor. Okay. Uh, may I uh, get further history? Like, where, where is it weak? And uh, um, maybe you can tell me further? I don't know, doctor, what, what's wrong with me. You know, I feel tired whole day. You know, I, I, I don't feel like doing any of my household work. I don't even feel like going to my job recently. I feel quite tired all the time. 
May I know where is it uh, actually weak? Is it your legs, your hands, your face? I don't think so. it is a particular lane in legs or hands and doctor. I, I feel tired in general. Okay, may I know how long is it? Sorry, doctor. How long has it been? Uh, it's been two months, doctor. Has it been worsening for the past two months or is uh, about the same? I think it is worsening, doctor. Okay, has this happened before or is it the first time? I think it's the first time, doctor. I was all right before, I feel. Okay, do you have any other symptoms uh, besides uh, weakness or like, your tiredness? Other than this tiredness, you know, doctor, sometimes I get to bleeding from my nose now and then. Okay, this one also has been for the past two months, is it? Uh, no, doctor, this is there, I think, since past four to six months. You know, first time, some four or five months back, I noticed there was some bleeding from my nose. Then uh, I didn't give much importance to that. Later on, I saw that it was coming again and again. And recently, I think it has increased. Has you, have you been seeing any doctor for that? Or? Uh, no, doctor. No, I, I could not get any time from my job. So I could not go to any doctor. Okay, do you have any bleeding elsewhere? Like your mouth, uh, have you vomit out blood or cough out blood or any other bleeding sites? No, doctor. Cough up blood, yes, doctor. One week back, I was coughing up blood. Okay, so do you have any loss of weight, loss of appetite? Uh, no, doctor. Any prolonged cough? Uh, cough is there, doctor. You know, last since last five, six months, uh, cough is there. Mostly, it is dry cough. Only, like I told, one week back, I noticed uh, blood in it. Mm -hmm. So, it's a cough of blood, love. Yes, yes, doctor. Okay, is there any um, running nose, uh, sore throat, fever? Uh, fever I get now and then, doctor. Okay, for the past, uh, how long have you been having fever? Maybe since two, three months, doctor. Okay, so... Uh, Even one week back, I, I, I was having fe fever. Okay. Uh, any other symptoms like joint pain or... Uh, Blood in the urine? Uh, no, doctor. Blood in the urine is, doctor. I have noticed the blood in my urine a couple of times. This one also has been... Uh, how, how long recently, has it been? Recently, recently, doctor. Recently, I noticed it. Sorry? Uh, this, how, how, how long ago? Sorry, doctor? How long ago is the bleeding uh, from the urine? Maybe a, couple, a week back, doctor. I don't exactly remember. Okay. Is there um, any other symptoms like stomach pain, diarrhea, vomiting? No, doctor. Any headache? Headache. I get headache, doctor, usually. Okay. I any... don't know if it is related to my work. Uh, like I work in quite stressful environment uh, in, in my company. So I think it's maybe related to that. I am not sure. Okay. Any shortness of breath? Uh, no, doctor. Chest pain, palpitation. No, doctor. No. Any rashes anywhere? Uh, no, doctor. No, sorry, I forgot. You, you didn't mention any joint pain, right? No joint pain, doctor. No. Any other symptoms besides uh, tiredness, uh, blood in the urine, and also coughing out blood? Uh, that's it, doctor. As okay. far any as I sweating at night? Uh... Sweating at night? No, doctor. No. Okay. Uh, do you have any uh, past medical history? Like, do you have diabetes, hypertension? Have you been admitted to the hospital before? No, doctor. Uh, no issues with blood pressure, I guess. You have blood pressure, high blood pressure? No, doctor. No, okay. Do you have uh, any uh, surgical history? Like, have you done any surgery in the past? No, no, doctor. Never. No, okay. Uh, do you have any family history of cancer or any other symptoms similar to yours? Uh, yes, doctor. My mother had some condition called as some Jogren syndrome, something. Okay. Yeah, she so she, she's on treatment at the moment. She's well. Yeah, yeah, doctor. It, it, it's it's fine. She gets some dryness in her eyes now and then. Okay, but you are she's not experiencing any uh, of the symptoms, the dryness of the eye. Uh, no, doctor. No. Okay. Uh, do you have any uh? Do you take any drugs at the moment? Uh, like medications or any traditional medicine? 
for this headache, I had taken this paracetamol, doctor. Okay. Do you have any uh, allergies? Uh, allergies like like what, doctor? Allergies to any medication like uh, uh, no, no, doctor. no. Okay. Uh, do you uh can I, I just want to ask you some sensitive questions? I like, uh, hope you don't mind. Do you smoke and drink alcohol? Uh, I do smoke, doctor. Oh, for a, how long have you been smoking? Uh, I've been smoking since five years, doctor. And uh, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? I smoke almost one to two sticks, doctor, in a day. Okay. Uh, how about drinking or alcohol? Uh, occasionally I drink, doctor. You know, oh. it's like well, maybe once in a week, in the weekend. <laughs> Once in a week. Uh, yeah, what yeah, do you doctor. drink? Do you drink beer or whiskey or? I usually prefer vodka, doctor. Okay, so it's just uh, one glass per week, is it? Yeah, yeah, doctor. I I keep a measure of some thirty to sixty ml. That's it. I I don't drink much. Okay, and then uh, uh how is it, has this uh, affected your work? Uh, has your symptoms affected your work or? Yes, you... yes, yes, doctor. You know, I work at a IT company, and because of these symptoms, like I said. I'm finding it very difficult to go to my job. In fact, I have taken a leave. It's been five days I have gone to my, gone to my job. And even in, even in my job, it's also quite stressful. Okay. Do I'm you... really worried, doctor. Like, what, what all is going on with me? And I'm really worried. How about, has it affected your house chores and all that? Housing work? Sorry, doctor? Uh, has it affected your housing work as well, like your house house chores? Yes, yes doctor. Yes, it, it has affected. I don't feel like doing any work. Okay. Uh, are you married at the moment? Uh, yes, doctor. I'm married. Okay. Um, so, uh, besides, uh, so you've been having this tiredness. Do you have any constipation? No, doctor. No. Any, um, uh, how is your menses like? Is it uh, heavy or... Uh, Normal flow. It's normal, doctor. Normal. Okay. Do you have uh, any symptoms like uh, low mood or you are easily irritable? Uh, no, doctor. No. Okay. Um. Then do you have uh, any hair loss, or ulcers in the mouth? No, doctor. Okay. So, uh, can I uh, move on to examination? Yes. Can oh, okay. okay, so uh, I would just like to examine the neurological system. So, just upper limb and lower limb uh, power. Okay, in upper limb, what do you want, doctor? Uh, so the, the power mainly, uh, whether it's power. Uh, okay, uh, is in it power, in you the... want to see for proximal or distal, doctor? Uh, both. Okay, uh, it's normal. Uh, lower limb as well. Lower limb as well is normal. And then the you uh urine dip um, uh then any uh, neck swelling. There's no neck swelling. Okay. Then uh, abdominal system. Is there any masses felt or something? Sorry. Any mass felt in the abdomen, the stomach area? No. No. Uh, how about the face? Is it uh? Symmetrical, there's no uh, one sided weakness or any. Uh, the image of the patient is given uh, in okay. the slide, you can see. Okay. So there's no uh, arthralgia also? No. Okay. Um, uh, then. Uh, You have got three minutes left, doctor. Okay. Uh, just... uh, how about the blood pressure? Her blood pressure is 147. Okay. Is there anything else you want to do, doctor, in the examination? Uh, check the mouth is uh, okay. You want to check the mouth? Okay, yeah. you check for the mouth, you don't find anything, it's normal. There's like no telangiectasia or uh, 
to ma... No, there's nothing. Okay. Uh, digital rectal examination is like okay. any bleeding. No, you don't, you are not supposed to do that in the examination. Okay. okay. Okay, anything else you want to do, Doctor Here? No, just check with the body whether there's any rashes or, or there are no rashes. Skin skin changes. No rashes, no skin changes. Uh ears are fine. Hmm? The ears, both ears. I any both ears, uh, uh, any no, sense. Externally it looks normal. Okay. Any sensory neural, oh, yeah, a sensory neural hearing loss, uh, Weber's and Rini's test. Okay, by the time you do all this, I think your times will be up. You'll have go, you have got last two minutes now, so you will go back to the patient. So the patient wants to know, doctor, what is going on with me? Oh yeah, is there any concern uh, at the moment? Yes, yes, doctor. I'm I'm concerned. Like, what's going on with me? Like, I'm worried. I have got some cancer or or something that, that I'm bleeding from my nose you know i feel tired okay so uh for now uh, we will uh, investigate you further so um we'll be doing a few blood tests and then uh, doing some scans to okay. learn what is actually happening to you mm -hmm. and uh, from there onwards then we'll move on to the further management of uh, how to treat you and uh, find out what is actually happening so mm -hmm. uh it will take some time and uh Hope you can wait for that. Yeah. Okay. Is there any okay, other doctor. concerns here? Okay, so I do I need to get admitted, doctor? Uh at this moment I think it would be best uh, for you to be admitted. Uh because uh we are not sure and uh you've been having this coughing of blood and okay. I'm a bit worried uh for what is happening to you actually. why why I'm feeling weak, doctor? Yeah, so uh, in that case, I need to uh, investigate further. Uh, mm -hmm. At this moment, I can't really uh, be sure. So I need to do some tests and then uh, do some scans as well to find out what is actually mm -hmm. happening. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Time's up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so what is your diagnosis here? Now you'll, have, you'll spend five minutes with the examiner. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is your diagnosis, doctor? Uh, my, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe uh, some uh, rapid pro progressive glomerular nephritis. Okay. Uh, the differences of other causes of nephritic syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because the patient presented with a, a slightly abnormal. Uh, Higher, on the higher range of uh, blood pressure yeah, mm -hmm. as her age and then she also has a uh, hematuria mm -hmm. and then uh, she also so got uh, hemoptysis and uh, epistaxis and as well as complaining of weakness so uh, I would want to rule out the uh, first uh, nephritic syndrome causes so okay. such as anything uh, else you want to th you want to think here other than this uh, then as well as uh, uh, okay, maybe oh, oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe. What are the investigation you would like to do here? So first of all, if it is like... nephritic syndrome, what hmm. investigation you would like to do? So first, uh, I would like to confirm the investigation uh, with the uh, urine dipstick. So mm -hmm. find out whether there's uh, hematuria in it. In it. Then uh, further on, uh, move on to the whether there's any uh, uh, deformed red blood cells. So uh, looking at the urine and then uh, doing a blood pressure and then uh, doing a renal panel. Mm -hmm. So looking for acute kidney injury. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, yeah, so uh, doing a full blood count, uh, looking mm -hmm. at the anemia. Mm -hmm. So, and also the platelet count because she's having a uh, bleeding tendency. So, I'll uh, look at the platelet count. White cell count to look for any fever or low white cell count. Mm -hmm. If it's in an autoimmune condition, then uh, renal panel, as I said. And then, uh, uh, okay. yeah. if it is nephritic syndrome, what treatment option would you like to consider here? 
So in uh, nephritic syndrome, uh, firstly, uh, find out the cause first and then uh, to confirm the cause, uh, do a renal biopsy. And also, uh, sorry, I wanted to do a urine protein creatinine ratio uh, to look for any protein urea. And also uh, for the treatment wise, can start uh, uh, steroid treatment. Then uh, if it's, uh, then you can start, start on uh, not uh, steroid sparing agents after that. Okay. Then, yeah, and then give her, yeah. Okay, can you say a few causes of hematuria, doctor? So the hematuria causes can be uh, due to uh, kidney uh, ureter and blood, uh, and as well as other causes. So uh, can be due to kidney stones uh, and then uh, malignancy causes. So uh, renal cell carcinoma, ureter ureteral carcinoma, uh, bladder cancer, okay. and then. Uh, Glomerular nephritis and then uh, okay, all right. your time is up. We'll stop here. Okay. okay. So you did well, doctor. You did few things right and few things wrong. Okay. Yes. So now before we go on to this case. Okay. So when it comes to clinical consultation, this is the most important station. You have got two stations. Clinical consultation will come in your station two as well as mm -hmm. station five. Right, each station carries twenty eight marks. Okay, so bulk of the exam exam marks is in these two stations, and it is very important that you do well in these two stations. So you are going to pass or fail exam depends on how well you are doing in these two stations, because here in this station they are going to assess all the skills. Right. Yeah. They are going to assess your history taking skills, that is communication. They are going to assess your examination skills. They are going to assess your clinical judgment skill. They are going to assess your uh, how well you are addressing the patient concerns. Right. Then they are going to assess how well you are picking up the physical signs. Yeah. Right. So yeah. they are going to assess all the clinical skills here. So this is a very important station. Okay. So here, the first 15 minutes you'll be spending with the patient. In that 15 minutes, you're going to take detailed history as well as you're going to do all the relevant physical examination. Okay. Then the last five minutes you'll be spending with the examiner where the examiner will be asking you the questions. Okay. So yes. uh, it is important that when you take history, now in the new uh, PACES format, there is no history taking station, right? Before you had a history taking station. Now, as there is no history taking station, in this station itself, they're going to see your history taking skills okay mm -hmm. just because you have got 15 minutes doesn't mean that you're gonna skip few history few important points or the few sequ important sequences in the history taking and jump on to your examination okay it is important that you take all the components of history taking in detail mm -hmm. okay so doctor here did you ask the patient about you asked the patient to allergic to any medication did you ask whether the patient is allergic to any food Oh, no, I didn't ask. no, so you should have asked that. So these all small okay. things are very important because they are going to mark you for that. You're going to lose your marks in the communication if you are not going, you are, you are going to miss anything, right? Okay. okay, now, whenever you start your examination, okay, we'll come to that later. Initially, when you started, you go and you address the, uh, you uh, tell about yourself, right? You introduce mm -hmm. yourself, then you see for the identity of the patient you confirm the identity of the patient right mm. then you will start what brought you to the hospital right mm. that's how it starts right mm. so once the patient tells you about her pro about his or her problem show a bit of empathy towards the patient that is very important mm. right every time the patient tells any of her problem you have to you have to at least utter that i'm really sorry that you're going through a lot these days i'll see what best i can do for you if you're not doing all this, the examiners will be pointing out all this and you might lose your marks. In the end, you might still address the concerns. But if you're not maintaining that empathy, if you're not showing that empathy towards the patient, then again, you're going to lose marks. Mm -hmm. Yes, the examiners will be noting down all this, right? So whenever the patient tells any, any of his or her problems, address that problem before going to the ne next thing, okay? Mm -hmm. that, that is one thing you missed. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And when it comes to the concern, there will be always more than one concern the patient will be having. Mm-hmm. So don't just stick on to just one concern. You ask what is the concern. The patient asks you something and you tell something and that doesn't end there. The patient might have one more concern. So it is important that you ask it again uh, whether is there any other concern. You have to keep on asking that till the patient says, no doctor, that's all. You have to keep on asking because it has happened in the previous step for a few candidates where the patient had some three to four concerns, but the candidate asked only one concern of the patient and that candidate had to fail the exam by one marks. So make sure that you ask, you keep asking for what are the concerns the patient is having till the patient says, that's all doctor, you have have clarified all of my doubts. Okay. And showing empathy is something that I wanted to highlight here. And there are a few things, few uh, medical terms that we need to avoid when we take history. For example, constipation is a jargon. You cannot use the term constipation in your exam. Mm -hmm. You can instead ask, is there any tightness in your bowel? Simple. right? And menses is a jargon. You cannot use the term menses. Instead, you can use how is your periods lately. Okay. Mm. Then, then okay. And what does the patient? Uh, what's the patient's job here? No, she works in IT. IT company. Okay. Mm. She said that she is finding it difficult at her job these days, right? Mm. Did you address those concerns? What solution yeah. did did you give to the patient for that? I didn't uh, okay, address yeah. it. So all these things will be said to the surrogate to be said so that the examiner want to see whether you are giving importance to that or not. When the patient is repeatedly telling that the stress at my work is bothering me, there should be something from your end that you should be telling to the patient. Mm. Okay. Maybe you can t- tell the patient, to, we'll see if there is any adaptation that can be done at your work and the home place. I'll see if any occupational therapy, therapist can help you. I'll refer you to my consultant to see if it, if you if you are able to control your symptoms, your stress will be less. And if you are symptom free, later you might feel much better health wise so that your job as well as your household work becomes easier. Right. Okay. So that was important. Okay. Counseling about her job was important here. Right. And when you ask the personal history to the patient you are asking about smoking alcohol before asking that you need to ask the patient you you need to give a warning shot that you are going to ask the personal stuff to the patient you you have to tell i i would like to ask you personal things about you if that is okay with you once the mm-hmm. patient tells yes that is when you are going to move on to ask about the smoking and alcohol history or any recreational mm-hmm. drug history you just asked before i said yes or something you continued so that was one mistake mm-hmm. it's okay Right? with the practice itself we will we'll avoid all this in the in, in, initially we all will do all this mistake so it, it's okay make sure that you don't mm. repeat that next time okay mm. and did you ask about the travel history here no i didn't ask no, okay so you should have asked even the travel history right okay 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 and whenever it comes to f- uh female patient make sure that you ask three p's that is pregnancy pills and periods right you you did not ask any any questions related to her pregnancy right yeah, I yes, so that should have been done. Any female patient make a habit of asking all this. Okay. okay. And the patient said that she is smoking here. And do you think, uh, okay, you didn't get the right diagnosis here, but still, you think the smoking can be related to whatever the condition she is suffering from? Can uh, it be related? Or at least it might be worsening the symptoms? Yeah, maybe at least. Yes. Worsening. So we have to give some solution to the patient towards that, right? Mm. So we have to address that, even though the patient is not worried about that. Patient won't tell you that, won't ask you that is my smoking is related to my my condition, right? Patient won't tell you that. So it's your job to tell the patient that, uh, though it is not clear what your diagnosis now, what your diagnosis, what your diagnosis is. But it, it it is proven that the smoking might be related whatever your condition, whatever you are going through and you are coughing up blood, you are having bleeding from your nose, the smoking might aggravate your condition, whatever it is. So I would highly suggest you to consider cutting down on your smoking. If you need any help, there is a help available at a hospital. This is something you can always offer to the patient. Mm-hmm. 
okay so any smoking or alcohol habits if you think that is relevant mostly it will be relevant to the patient's condition make sure that you address that mm. okay mm. all right so this was about the history taking okay and in the history taking make sure that you have these things written in your paper before you enter the room and make sure that mm. you touch upon all these components okay even if you are missing one single thing in this you might go on to lose marks okay so one a good candidate might take a very detailed history but somewhere he or she might forget to ask about the allergic history and the recent yeah. diet we have seen that the patient had a acute gastroenteritis and the reason was just the patient was allergic to salmon fish most yeah. of the candidates forgot to forgot to ask about the allergic history there and they had to fail the station so that can happen so covering each and every component of the history taking thing is very important right okay okay and yes past history you covered well drug history is not just the drugs you are asking so whenever you are asking about the symptoms and the patient tells you i'm suffering from this and from this for example here the patient had bleeding from nose weaknesses at that time itself you can ask the patient have you tried any medications for it yeah. Okay. That moment itself, we can finish off your drug history, right? See, there is no okay. clear cut rule that you have to go one by one in in this history taking. You can ask any history okay. anywhere, but it is your duty that you cover all the points. Okay. If you think travel history is relevant, for example, the patient had a recent travel history, and once he came back from that travel, he had a fever. right mm -hmm. so you are thinking yeah. about fever in a returning traveler here in that case if you think that is relevant you can ask a travel history directly that time itself so you have covered the travel history there right mm -hmm. so that's how the history taking should go so once you start talking to the to the patient the patient can come up with few new, few new information that was given outside for example here the outside the information was weakness but once you went inside the complete history was different right Mm -hmm. yeah yes, yes so based on that you have to think and ask what might be relevant based on this case okay and personal history before taking personal history give a warning shot to the patient that i'll be asking few personal question of yours if you don't mind patient says yes then go ahead to ask that right mm -hmm. then social history you covered sexual history i think you didn't touch upon that yeah i didn't uh... yes so that is something you should have covered that is very important right Yeah. Okay. If you miss on to the sexual history, then you might lose on a lot of marks in your exam. Okay. And yeah. occupation history is also very important. Yes, in all the female patient, make sure that you ask about the contraceptive pills, pregnancy, and also about the periods, and end your history with the family history and the travel history. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So when it in this case the patient had weakness, the patient had bleeding from her nose since last four months, the patient has recurrent respiratory tract infections right since last few months and recently the patient even had hematuria right blood in the urine and mm. fever now and then okay mm. so when it comes to history taking make sure that after you elicit all the positive uh, positive findings positive things in the history you should also ask for the negative history right mm. i think you missed on few things uh, when when you are supposed to ask about the negative history so when you ask about the negative history make a habit of asking from from head to toe for example you can start with headache any blurring of vision any dryness in your eyes then go to the ear see for any ear fullness or any ear discharges right any oral yeah. oral soreness or oral ulcers any lumps or bumps in your body right when you come down touch upon the respiratory system and cvs right ask for yeah. cough difficulty in breathing then chest pain palpitation for palpitation you can ask like any raising of your heartbeats or any awareness of your heartbeats try to avoid jargons as much as possible then come down ask about per abdominal system symptoms then come down and ask about genital urinary symptoms then go on to ask about the joint pain or any joint stiffness or any lumps or bumps anywhere to see for the any autoimmune disorder or any rheumatological conditions and make sure that you ask about the weight loss appetite right night mm. sweats you covered a few points here right so make sure that you ask a detailed uh, negative history because the patient might be having one or the other uh, complaints that you might miss here the patient had a swelling in her lower limbs 
so f sometime what happens is so the surrogate will be told to give this information to the candidate only if the candidate asks you for that or is the the surrogate is not going to give you the information or the patient or the surrogate won't give you the information here you did not ask the patient about any swelling in your legs so the patient didn't give you the information because the surrogates or the patients are told not to give that information to the candidates unless the candidate asks you okay so in if you miss on to some some uh, findings in the history it's it is because the examiners might have told the candidates to be not to not to reveal that finding until unless the candidates ask okay so that's about the history taking and when it comes to examination make a habit of going starting it from the hands okay so doesn't matter what complaints the patient is coming up okay always now again before starting the examination did you ask the patient's permission oh, no, I didn't no okay so when it comes this thing comes in patient's welfare okay even that skill is assessed here in the patient welfare you have to get 28 marks out of 32 marks to pass okay so you can afford to lose only four marks in in this skill right so if for any two patients if you forget to take permission before examining it's a clear fail you might get 166 out of 172 still you will fail the exam because you have not passed that particular skill so patient welfare is very very important even though you have cleared this station with all your knowledge, with all your proper history taking, all your examinations, still you would have failed the station. Asking the patient's permission before touching the patient is the most important thing. Okay. So before touching the patient, ask the patient, is it okay if I examine you? Then ask the patient, are you in any pain? If you are in any pain at any moment, let me know. I'll be more careful. Only after this, you got to proceed ahead to examine the patient. Without that, you are not supposed to touch the, the patient. Okay. That is one thing you missed. So once you start examining the patient, start with the hand. It doesn't matter what the symptoms the patient is coming up. See hands. See for any wasting. See for any rashes or the dorsum of the hand. Ask the patient to put her hands up. Then see for any rashes. Then ask the patient to turn her hands around. See for any wasting in the palm. See for any rashes. At the same time, you can see even for the clubbing, right? Then check for the pulse rate. Okay, take 10 seconds and make sure that you check for the pulse rate. Then come up, see for any pallor in the eyes, see for any icterus. Then come down, see for any oral soreness or any oral ulcers. It was relevant in this case, right? See for any oral ulcers. Here, the patient, if you see the image, the patient knows there is a kind of deviated nasal septum, right? There is a deviated nose, right? Deviated nose, right? So this was something I would have said if you had asked me, like, have you noticed any change in the appearance of your nose recently? Because that this was a case of vaginal granulomatosis. So, and so it was relevant in this case. Okay. So a examination, if you see something uh, as this was the case of vaginal granulomatosis, you can see inside the nasal cavity to see for any nasal crust or any deviated nasal septum, right? Then quickly examine the ear because it is relevant here. Vaginal granulomatosis patient can present with chronic serous otitis media, right? To see for any discharges. Then come down, do a quick lymph node examination. Then go down, see for auscultate for the heart sounds now again whenever you are examining a female patient either a, or a male patient never ever auscultate over the dress okay or the clothes never ever auscultate over the clothes if you do that again you will lose the marks in the physical examination okay never do that okay ask the examiner's permission ask the patient's permission if the patient is ready to expose you can expose or else if the examiner tells you minimally expose the patient, then you can auscultate under the clothes, but never ever auscultate over the clothes. Okay, quickly you can auscultate for the heart sounds. You can auscultate for the lung sounds also here. That is important. The patient had a cough with hemop uh, hemoptysis recently. Then go down if abdomen, per abdomen, if you think it is relevant, if you have time, you can examine or if you can skip that. Come down, see, see for any rashes in the legs. Okay, if you see any swelling in the lower limb, see, check for pedal edema. 
that if you had done that much of sequence, that would have been enough here. Okay. And digital rectal examination is not something you will do in the examination. That is something you will tell the examiner in the, at the end that I would like to complete my examination by doing a digital rectal examination and also looking at the inguinal lymph nodes. Okay. In exam, you are not supposed to do that. In the end, you can mention it to the examiner. Here, the patient had pallor. As you missed to check for the pallor, I didn't give you that finding. Okay. So, that was about the examination. So, make sure that you have this sequence for all the patients. Start from the hand, C for clubbing, C for the heart rate, then go up, C for pallor, rectus, C for lymphadenopathy, C for any oral rashes if it is important to that case. Come down, auscultate for the lungs or auscultate for the heart zones and come down to the abdomen and come down to the legs and finish your examination. If there's any th specific sequence, then for example, if it is an ankylosing spondylosis case, in that case, you might have to do Schober's test, right? You might have to ask the patient to stand up, see for any, huh? see for any kyphosis or kyphoscoliosis, right? In that case, and in that case, even you might have to again see for any aortic regurgitation. You might have to even see for collapsing pulse. So based on the different case, the examination, there might be few extra examinations, uh, examination things that you might have to perform, okay, to elicit the findings, okay. So, but make sure that you follow this pattern for any case so that you don't miss on to the important things, right? At least the basic things like pallor and all you should not miss. Okay, so if you follow this pattern and then I think that becomes easier in that case. Okay. All right. Okay. And like I said, make sure that you ask for the concerns to the patient. Okay. All the concerns should be addressed and the patient can have more than one concern. So make sure that you address all the concerns. If you're not sure about the diagnosis, you can just tell that at the, at the moment, based on what information I have got from you, it is not clear what the diagnosis can be, but I'll definitely uh, refer you to my consultant and we'll run some tests and we'll come back to you with the right diagnosis. And I'll give you all the info information. This is something you can tell if you're not sure. Okay. Right. And when it comes to presentation of the case and when the examiner asks you for the diagnosis, make sure that you give it in terms of differential diagnosis rather than sticking on to one particular diagnosis. Right? Just with the history taking and physical examination, you cannot come to just one diagnosis for a patient. right? So make sure that you give a bit of differentials. That would always be helpful because there is a marks for differential diagnosis and not for diagnosis. Right? Okay, so there's a mark for differential diagnosis. So, so make sure that you give the differential diagnosis. Okay. So that was about this case. Okay. Okay, so give me a minute. So in this case, the diagnosis was vaginal granulomatosis, right? Okay. So the patient had a recurrent nose, uh, patient had history of no nosebleed, right? Then the patient had uh, amaturia, 
history, right? Recurrent respiratory, tract, upper respiratory tract infections. So when it comes to hematuria, you have various causes. If the patient age is less than 45, then you can think in terms of pulmonary renal syndromes like good passer syndrome, magnus granulomatosis, microscopic polyangitis. And you can think of glomerulonephritis like IgA nephropathy, post-infectious glomerulonephritis, Alport syndrome, and even vasculitis conditions like polyarteritis nodosa. If the patient is presenting more than 45 years, then you can think of any malignancies. Right. And in all the ages, you can think in, in terms of renal calculi okay, or any infection like uh, pyelonephritis or any certain drugs like anticoagulants, right? Cyclophosphamide or any bleeding disorders. Right. So these are the few things you can uh, think of for hematuria. And for hemoptysis, you can think of like respiratory infections like pneumonia, tuberculosis, which is quite common uh, in, in India. You can think of lung abscesses, acute bronchitis, or any malignancies, even vascular conditions, like in this case, like vaginous granulomatosis, good pasture syndrome, hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Okay. And even cardiac causes like pulmonary edema, metastenosis can also present with hemoptysis. And again, bleeding disorder, anticoagulants also can present with this. If the patient is having hem hemoptysis with hematuria, then again, you can think of anchor-associated vasculitic conditions. Like, like in this case, like pregnant granulomatosis, microscopic polyangitis, Zerg Strauss syndrome, right? Other conditions also like good passer syndrome, IgA nephropathy can also be the possibilities. Right. So mostly this vaginous canalomatosis patients, they present with upper respiratory tract involvement is an autoimmune disorder where almost 95% of the patients will have an upper respiratory tract involvement and it can be in the form of uh, midline nasal deformities like deviated nasal septum or septal perforation or ulcers. Right? And lower respiratory tract involvement can be in the form of diffuse alveolar hemorrhage where the patient can present with hemoptysis. Okay, and renal involvement is also quite common, right? 60% of the patient present with renal involvement, like in this case, where the patient can present with hematuria and renal failure. So whenever there's a renal involvement, patient can go into RPG, that is rapidly progressive renal failure, where the renal function deteriorates in just about 7 to 10 days after the onset of the illness. And patient can present with edema or oliguria, okay? And lab findings, you can see raised creatinine, levels. Yeah, one important differential for uh, vaginous granulomatosis is microscopic polyangitis. Okay, so even that is an anchor associated vasculitis and presents similar to vaginous granulomatosis, but the main difference there would be uh, nerve involvement is quite common. That is can present with mononeuritis multiplex and the skin involvement is quite common in microscopic polyangitis than compared to vaginous granulomatosis. Okay, and Jerk Strauss syndrome is also something you can consider for, for such uh, anchor associated vasculitis, where in Jerk Strauss syndrome, patient can have history of uncontrolled asthma, eosinophilia of more than 10%, and mononeuritis multiplex, and they can be pulmonary infiltrates and paranasal sinus abnormalities. Okay, so in this case, we could have given the differentials in terms of anchor associated vasculitis. We can we could have given the differential in terms of IgA nephropathy, good pasture syndrome, and bleeding disorder. But the first main differential could have been vaginous granulomatosis, microscopic polyangitis, Jerk Strauss syndrome. Then down the line, you can think in terms of good pasture syndrome, IgA nephropathy. Okay. Right. Okay. So in the history taking, it was important to address the concerns of the patients and mainly address the risk factor uh, like smoking. Right? That was important. Okay. Okay. And when it comes to treatment option here, when the patient asks you, should I get admitted? And the, what would have been the reason here for the weakness? One reason would have been because she might be anemic because of the bleeding. Another uh, reason could have been the underlying the condition itself, right? The autoimmune disorder, right? This associated vasculitis itself can present with the myalgia, right? So that can be one more reason for the weakness, right? So it was needed that patient get admitted here because we had to check her hemoglobin level. If it is low, then again, urgent treatment would have been required, right? Okay. So that was one more thing. And when it comes to treatment, uh, steroids and cyclophosphamide are the mainstay treatment for this anchor associated vasculitis. Okay.
Any doubts till now? No. Okay. All right. So you you did well. Uh, but these are the few things I think you can consider when you uh, do any next case and try to avoid these mistakes. Okay. All right. So shall we move on to the next case? We'll do one more case. Anybody else would like to take this case? Dr. Santosh Kumar, would you like to take this case? Okay. Dr. Radak, would you like to take this case? Yeah, can you? Okay, you want to take? Yeah. Okay, okay, all right then. Okay. You can take two to three minutes to prepare yourself. Okay, I'll, I'll share the screen. You can prepare. I'll put the timer. I'll give you three minutes to prepare, doctor. Okay, it's done. Okay, Doctor, we'll start. You can start. Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Raja here, one of the doctors. Uh, here. Uh, Hello, Doctor. Can I get your name? Yes, Doctor. I'm Mr. Josh, Doctor. Okay. Hi, uh, hi Mr. Josh. Uh, what brings you here to the clinic today? Doctor, you know, I'm, I'm having weakness, doctor. I feel weak mostly in, in my shoulders, you know. Okay. How long has it been? Uh, I think it's there since last two months, doctor. Okay. Has it been becoming uh, progressively worse? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's the same, doctor. It has not uh, worsened, but it's the same. Uh, so when you initially came, is it over the, uh, more over the sh uh, shoulders or is the whole uh, hands and arms? I think more weak in 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 the shoulders, doctor. You know, I feel I find it weakness when I raise my hand up. You know, when when I do some work, during that okay. time I I find it a bit difficult. Okay. Uh, uh, besides this, is there any pain or numb? Uh, you can't really feel. No, uh, over your hands, nothing. No, else. doctor, nothing, doctor. No. Okay. And how about any other weakness uh, elsewhere over your body, like your legs? I have in legs face. also. I think yes, doctor. I have, I find it weak when I walk upstairs. You know, when I walk upstairs, I I find it a bit difficult. And uh, how long has this been? Uh? This is also there since two months, doctor. Same. I'm I'm and... really worried, doctor. 
Is it the? Uh, I'm really sorry to hear that. If you, uh, I, can I just ask you more questions, um, and, and then we can find out what's the cause. Yes, doctor. Sure, sure. Okay. How about any uh, weakness over your feet, or is is it, is it the whole leg, or is it just one particular part of the leg? And the weakness is there when I walk upstairs, doctor, and feet. No, doctor. No. Okay. How about your face? Is there any weakness? In my face, no, doctor. Okay. So there's no like pain or reduce uh, no, sensation. No, doctor. Okay. Besides that, any other pro uh, problems you have? Sorry, doctor. Problem Do you have any other issues besides uh, weakness? Other than this, I think there's nothing else, doctor. I'm very, I'm only this weakness I'm worried about. Okay. Uh, let me just ask you another few more questions. Yes, so, doctor. Uh, do you have any headache, uh, blurring of vision? No, doctor. Uh, okay. No uh, dizziness? No, doctor. Any eye pain or rashes over your face? No, doctor. Any ear pain, discharge? No, no doctor. Any uh, neck swelling? No, doctor. Okay. Any shortness of breath? Uh, I feel, chest pain? I feel uh, should. Difficulty in breathing, doctor, when I walk. Yeah, how long has this been? Uh, I think that is there since six months. Okay, has it been, been becoming worse for the past six months? I think it is becoming worse, doctor, recently. Okay, then uh, do you have any uh, breathlessness at night? At like, night? No, doctor. Like, do I you find wait? it difficult in breathing mostly when I... Uh, walk, you know, doctor. Okay. Uh, how far can you walk when you feel breathless? Um, maybe some 200 meters. If I walk, I find it breathlessness, doctor. So, before this, you've been, before the past six months, you've been able to walk. Uh, how, how long have you been able to walk? I've been able to walk some 200, 300 meters, doctor. That's it. After that, I, ha I find it breathless. You know, I have to stop. Okay. So, how many pillows do you use to sleep? One pillow, doctor. Okay, so you don't uh, wake up during the at night to catch your breath. No, doctor. No, no. no. Okay. Uh, and then um, is there any chest pain? No chest pain, doctor. Do you feel your heart uh, racing very fast? No, doctor. Okay. And then do you have any cough, running nose, sore throat, or fever? Cough. Yes, doctor. I've been coughing. Uh, you know, I have got this dry cough since last four months. Okay. Is there any? Uh, there's no so blood. But sometimes I get up in in the night from my sleep, coughing. You know, okay. I have tried different medication. I have tried different syrups, but it, it's of no use. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, do you have? Uh, you you've taken over the counter, is it? Or you've seen? It's over the over the counter, doctor. You know. You know, my son went and bought me a few syrup, and I tried that for my cough. Okay. Have you tried any other medications besides uh, this cough syrup? I don't your... know the name of the drug, doctor. My son gave me one some some drug, and I took that. He said this is this tablet is for the cough, but I took that, but that was of no use. You take any other medication for your weakness of your body? Weakness and no, doctor. I didn't take anything else other than this drug and this syrup for this cough. Other than that, nothing. Okay. Do you take any traditional medicine? Or... No, doctor. I've never done all that. I've never taken any traditional drugs. Do you have any allergies to any medications or food? Uh, Sorry? Do you have any no. allergies? Allergies, yes, doctor. I'm allergic to this. I have taken this amox something, amoxicillin something tablet. Okay. Amoxicillin. Oh. Yes, back, yes. Uh, when I had taken that tablet, you know, that uh, I had developed some rashes and itching. And the doctor okay. said me that not to take the tablet again. Okay. No, no food allergies, no? No, doctor. Okay. So, do you have any uh, vomiting, uh, loose stools, uh, any... Uh, do you have any of that? Stomach pain? No, doctor. How about your any urine pain, uh, blood in the urine or something? No, nothing, doctor. Any leg swelling? No, doctor. Okay. Any rashes over your body? No, doctor. Okay. Uh, 
sorry, I would like to just ask you some personal questions. Uh, do you mind if I ask? Yes, doctor, you can ask, doctor. Okay, do you smoke? Uh, yes, doctor, I smoke. Uh, how much do you smoke? How many cigarettes per day? Doctor, I smoke almost two packets per day. Uh, and how long have you been smoking? I've been smoking like 15 years, doctor, now by now. Okay. And how about, uh, do you drink alcohol? Uh, yes, doctor, I drink alcohol. Uh, how much do you drink? Uh, I take whiskey, doctor, mostly in the weekends. Okay, so uh, how many glasses of whiskey is that? Uh, two to three glasses, doctor. Okay, and then, uh, sorry, may I ask uh, some of your sex sexual history? Are you married at the moment? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay, uh, how many partners do you have? Or is it just your wife? Oh, only my wife. I don't have any other casual sexual partners. Okay. Uh, have you traveled uh, anywhere recently? No, doctor. Oh, okay. Do you have uh, how, how about your family? Do you have any family history of cancer? Yes, doctor. You know, my father had uh, lung cancer. Okay. And how is he? Had his lung the... cancer. He nearly died because of that. At what age he died? Died at the age of some seventy five, doctor. Okay. Any any other problems with, uh, among your family members like weakness or trauma? Oh, birth? doctor. Oh, okay. Uh, uh can I? Uh, uh how was uh were you born uh well or any other problems when you were born? Uh, no, no, doctor. Nothing. I, I, I'm all fit, I guess. Other than this weakness, you know, I don't, I don't think so. There's anything, any other problem with me. Okay. Do you have any loss of weight, loss of appetite? Yes, doctor. I have lost uh, almost uh, ten kgs. You know. In how long? Since last three months. Okay. Any loss of appetite? Uh no, doctor. Okay. Any uh okay. Can I move on to examination? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. Um, may I examine you, uh, Mr. George? And uh, if there's any pain when I'm uh, examining you, please let me know. Yes, doctor. Sure, sure. Okay. So I would like to look at the peripheries uh, from general inspection first. Okay. Whether there's any muscle wasting, uh, general appearance. Okay. General appearance, the patient is well built. Any cacaxi, you know, uh, well built, okay. No. Uh, and then uh, peripheries, can I move on to the hands? Looking for any signs of clubbing? Uh, there is clubbing. Okay, any tar staining? Uh, There's then, no uh, tar staining. And then any uh, CO2 retention, uh, like for the tremors? Uh, you're asking for flapping tremors? No. Yeah. Okay, and then the radial pulse, uh, regular? Okay. You check the pulse rate and you see that the pulse rate is 86 beats per minute. And it's regular. Okay. And then uh, I'd like to move on to the eyes, where there's any uh, congenital pallor, chondis. No pallor, no ectors. Okay. And uh, move on to the mouth area, uh, whether there's any uh, glossitis. Or... There's no glossitis. Okay. And then uh, looking at the JVP, whether it's raised. Okay. So the patient was sitting. How would you like to check the JBP? Uh, at the uh, forty-five degrees. Uh, okay. Okay. Have you exposed the patient, doctor? Uh, haven't yet. So I would like to expose the patient. Uh, okay. All right. So okay. remove the t-shirt. Uh, patient will open his shirt. He'll keep it aside. Then he'll lie down. Okay. So I would like to do the uh, respiratory examination. Okay. So JVP. Ask, yeah, and you want to see for JVP? Yeah, I want to like uh, look at the JVP. Okay, all right. JVP is normal. It's not traced. Okay, then the precosternal distance and also the uh, tracheal deviation. Okay, we, what position you want to check the this for? Uh, no, the patient uh, is in lying down position. Is that 45 degree or checked for JVP? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at 45 degree, I would like to check JVP and also move on to the respiratory examination, checking for the precosternal distance and, as well as the uh, tracheal deviation. Cricosternal distance at 45 degree. Okay. It's normal. Okay. And any tracheal deviation? You can insert your three fingers. Oh, any tracheal deviation? 
no tracheal deviation. Okay, I would like to move on to the chest. Uh, looking for any uh, scars. Or... There's no scars. And, uh, okay. and then um, any barrel uh, chest shape? No. Okay, so I would like to uh, first do chest expansion uh, bilaterally and anteriorly. Okay, chest expansion is normal. And then uh, move on to percussion. Okay. Uh, Percussion note, you don't find anything. Okay, then uh, auscultation. Uh, looking on for... auscultation, you find a bit of crepitations in the basal zones, only on the right side. Okay, and then uh, move on to vocal resonance. Okay. Vocal resonance is increased. Over the right lower zone? Right lower okay. zone, yes. Okay, then uh, move on to the uh, posterior side uh, doing the same examination okay uh, and then uh, checking for uh, pedal edema okay fine you came down you checked for pedal edema there's no <clears throat> pedal edema now i would like to check for any uh since you mentioned shoulder weakness i would like to check for uh, proximal myopathy okay uh see in 15 minutes uh history taking itself will go on for almost eight to ten minutes hmm. so your last two minutes will be to address the patient concern you have got only three to four minutes for physical examination you won't get this much of time in exam okay, okay. uh so I'll ask, by the uh, if you're done uh hmm. respiratory examination here it would have taken a lot of time okay fine you want to do proximal muscle you want to check power here anyways i'll tell you uh, uh, yeah, any proximal myopathy. Okay, there is proximal muscle weakness okay. in upper limb. Okay, then uh, just check for neck swelling for looking for hypothyroidism. No neck swelling. Okay, so uh, then a uh, little I'll ask uh, patient's concern. So, Mr. George, do you have any uh, concerns uh, at the moment? Uh, yes, doctor. I I'm really worried. Like, what's going on? <clears throat> Why I'm having this weakness? And I'm worried like if I'm having some cancer like my dad, what is going on with me? Okay. Okay, Mr. George. So um uh I'll explain to you. So I believe uh that we have to do some tests, uh, blood tests as well as uh, X ray of your lungs and followed by further scans to actually confirm what is actually happening to you. Uh -huh. And uh, after that we will move on to how to manage you at the moment. So I uh, I'll get this uh, test all done and consult with my consultant and get it right away. So yeah. Any other concerns you have? Okay. So what is going on, doctor? What what's <clears throat> wrong with me? So there are several possibilities that could be going on. Uh, it could be due to uh, uh, since you've been smoking for quite some time. So. Uh, there could be possibilities of some lung condition that may happen. Uh, so can it be cancer, uh, doctor? I I would I do not want to worry you so much until I confirm a diagnosis. So I would like to do all the tests and then uh get a proper diagnosis. Then only I would like to inform you. Okay. Okay. Any other concerns do you have? Okay. So can I go back to my job, doctor? Okay. Uh yes, if you feel well at the moment, uh you may go back to uh to to work, and we can also write you some uh let uh, letter uh just to say, maybe can keep you at the light duty at this moment, and then we'll give you an appointment. Uh, we'll do a test immediately. Do I need to get admitted, doctor? At this moment, I would say we will uh we will just do uh some blood tests as outpatient, and then. You can come back, but we will do it within a one week. Then you can come back and see us immediately. Okay, okay, doctor. Do you have any other concern? No, doctor. That's it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. <sighs> All right. Okay. So, what is your diagnosis here? Uh, so, my, my main differential diagnosis would be uh, lung cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. A possibility of uh, squamous cell carcinoma because of the smoking history. Uh, okay, another, squamous cell carcinoma. Yeah, another possibility, uh, a differential diagnosis would be uh, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
and also tuberculosis. Okay. Second diagnosis would be COPD. You said okay. Yeah. And tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. Yeah. Is anything else you want to think due to the weakness the patient is having here? Possibly. Which of your different differential diagnosis that you have given me just now, you think might be related to the weakness pattern the patient is having here? Uh, possibly of some paraneoplastic syndrome. Or... Sorry, paraneoplastic. Uh, yeah. So. Uh... Okay. Which 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 condition you think can present with paraneoplastic condition? Anti-HU uh, antibody uh, syndrome. Okay, which among which differential diagnosis among the list you have given me, you think can cause this paraneoplastic condition? The lung cancer. OPD or malignancy or tuberculosis. Ma malignancy. What malignancy? A lung malignancy. Okay, can you specify any specific lung malignancies? Uh, small cell lung cancer. Small cell lung carcinoma. Okay, okay. All right. What investigation would you like to do here? So, uh, I would like to confirm my diagnosis uh, first by doing a chest X-ray, uh, looking for any pleural uh, effusion or masses, mm -hmm. and then uh, followed by a CT uh, thorax, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, after that we'll be doing a blood test. So, looking uh doing a full blood count, looking at anemia uh, and uh, based by cell count uh, mm -hmm. looking for any infection mm -hmm. and then uh, looking for renal panel for any dehydration uh, causing a uh, acute kidney injury. Okay. And, um, uh, in terms of the... Okay. Yeah. Okay. You initially told it can be squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, yeah. so can squamous cell carcinoma present with paraneoplastic manifestations? No. No, okay. So would you like to consider here squamous cell carcinoma or small cell carcinoma? A small cell lung carcinoma. Okay. Do you know of any condition that the small cell carcinoma can present in a way this patient is presented here? Uh, paraneoplastic the... manifestation? Polymyositis, dermatomyositis. Polymyositis and dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis. Okay. Okay. All right. What investigation would you like to do here? One specific investigation to see for the pattern of weakness. Uh, creatinine kinase to... Sorry? Creatinine kinase. Creatinine kinase. Okay. And Anything the... else? Uh, electromyography. Electromyography. Okay. And also nerve conduction study. Uh, Sorry? The nerve conduction study. Okay. All right, okay. How, how would you manage this patient treatment-wise? So if I confirm the patient has small cell lung carcinoma, I would like to... Uh, initially, I would like to get a biopsy and then confirm it. And then uh, most likely small cell lung carcinoma are not uh, amenable to surgery. So I would... Uh, refer him to the medical oncologist for uh, chemo radiotherapy uh, management and then uh, physiotherapy for his uh, shoulder weakness and as well as uh, for strengthening exercises and then occupational therapies uh, so that he can go back to his work and then uh, managed by multidisciplinary uh, team so oncologist uh, respiratory physician uh, physiotherapy, occupational therapist, and then a dietitian just to uh, improve his uh, uh, dietary wise so that he's uh, back to normal. And, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. So, time's up. Okay. You did better than the first case, doctor. Uh, okay. We did quite well here. Okay. So, there are a few things, a uh, few mistakes uh, I'd like to highlight. That is, one is when you ask for allergy history. When the patient tells last time because of this medication, I had this 
uh, allergy always ask a bit detail about what actually happened when you took that medication what actually happened to see whether the patient had rashes to see if the patient had an anaphylaxis right mm -hmm. always make sure that you ask details what actually happens when you take that medication Okay, always make sure that make a habit that you ask a bit of detail whenever the patient comes up with this allergic history. Okay, and uh, when you are asking the negative history, it's good that you are asking all the negative histories properly, but make sure that you ask all the complaints individually. For example, headache, you have any headache, the patient says no, then go on to blood vision. The patient mm -hmm. says no. Then go on to the other thing. Any lumps or bumps anywhere in your body. The patient says no. Then you go on to the, your next come next symptom like any chest pain. Patient says no. Then you go on to the next. Don't ask these complaints like like together. You know, a like headache, blood of blurring vision. You had any chest pain and breathing difficulty. Don't ask them together like that. Okay. okay. Few surrogate might miss your question. Even though you have asked, they might mm -hmm. not listen to it and they might say no. So you will miss on to the important uh, history there. Okay, don't do that. Okay. Then whenever the patient tells you about the smoking history, yes, you ask the smoking history here in detail, but here the smoking can be definitely related to his condition, right? You yeah. are thinking of malignancy. The smoking is definitely related. So one thing you have to ask the patient here is, have you ever considered to quit smoking? And again, you did not counsel the patient regarding the quitting smoking here, like the previous case. Whenever the patient tells you patient has any risk factor and that is related to the condition the patient has, make sure that you counsel the patient for that risk factor. That comes in clinical judgment. You will lose the marks in clinical judgment skill if you don't do this. Very important. Okay, mm -hmm. always ask the patient, have you ever considered quitting the smoking? If the patient says no, then tell the patient that I think the smoking can be related for your condition that you are suffering from. And I would highly request you to consider to quit smoking. And if you need any help, there is a help available from our side. Okay. Make sure that you ask this to the patient. Make sure that you tell. Okay, it doesn't matter if the patient says no, it, it's, it's his wish. You have to respect that. But it is your duty that you address that thing there itself. Okay, because in the end, you might forget okay. sometime. Okay, okay, few candidates, what they do is they address it in the end when they address the concerns. But sometime in the exam tension, you might miss. So make sure that you can address it at that time itself, just to be on the safer side. Okay. okay. And never ever hesitate to ask about the sexual history. Okay. It's not that common to take a detailed sexual history in Indian setup in our hospital, but in, in, in the UK exams, it's, it's a very important history. Do not hesitate to ask about the sexual history. Just ask the patient that, would I like, I'd like to ask you personal questions about it. Is that okay? Then the patient says, yes, just go on to ask, confidently ask about the sexual history. Okay, are you married? Okay, do you have any other casual sexual partners? The patient will answer no. If it is yes, the patient will answer yes. Okay, whatever it is, do not hesitate to ask for that. Okay, and when the patient said here, my father died because of the cancer, just show some sympathy towards the patient. Mm -hmm. Tell that I'm really sorry for your loss. Just make sure that you tell that sentence. Okay, and whenever the patient talks about weight loss, make sure that you ask whether it was an intentional weight loss or unintentional weight loss. Okay, okay. so few patients might be trying to reduce their weight, right? They'll be working yeah. out, they'll be exercising, having a good diet plan to reduce the weight. So make sure that if there is a weight loss, you ask for any intentional or unintentional weight loss. Okay, and when you finish the exam, <clears throat> examination in the end say thanks to the patient always say thanks to the patient that comes in patient's welfare okay you did examination part well here mm, okay so i'll come to that so once you started the examination first thing that you do is when you go you introduce the patient you did that second thing that you do is position the patient you forgot to do that then the third comes is proper exposure of your patient you didn't do that you did mm. your bit of examination, then you are exposing the patient. Okay, that is not the way. The sequence should be proper. Right? You go ask the patient's permission, then ask the patient's permission whether I can expose you. Is it okay if you can undress for me? The patient mm. says yes, and he will remove his shirt so that you have a 
well exposed patient for your examination because you know that you are going to auscultate here that you are thinking in terms of malignancy right so before going to the examination you should have few differentials in your mind so your examination will be based on that right so exposure of the patient and here there was no need to check for jvp right uh, yeah. even if jvp is there not there is not going to make any difference so you should choose on to what uh, physical examination you want to do in this patient okay and complete respiratory system examination was not needed here so basically here the diagnosis was lems oh. because of the small cell carcinoma the patient had oh. right that is lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome that's what the patient had the patient has proximal muscle weakness and one more thing oh. you missed in the history was the weakness was there you should have asked at what part part of the day you are having weakness more whether it is more in the morning hour or it is more in the evening hour that is very important right? <clears throat> here the patient had more weakness in the morning as the day goes on it it goes off if you had asked had I given you that history so it would have given a clue that the patient might be having a lems here yeah. right so in lems what happens is an incremental response right the patient will have weakness but with the exercise or with the activity the weakness goes off mm -hmm. Right? So that was missed in the history. If you had picked up that, then I think you could have done, you could have picked up the lens as well. So the diagnosis was lens here because of the small cell carcinoma, okay, which is a paraneoplastic manifestation of the small cell carcinoma because where the antibodies go and act against the voltage-gated calcium VBAR Q channels. Right. There's an incremental response. So the first most important differential for the lens would be what, doctor? No, my stenic gravis. Okay. So, whenever it comes to lens, you should also be thinking of a, about myasthenic gravis, right? Mm. So, when it comes to lens, when you're thinking in terms of myasthenic gravis, for myasthenic gravis, is there any particular test you want to do to elicit fatigability? Yeah. So, I would ask the patient to uh, check ocular myasthenic gravis. So, ask the patient to raise the eye, then look for doses. Okay, good. That is one and test then, you will do. One more thing for proximal muscle weakness, what you will do? So First, initially check for the proximal muscle weakness, right? Yeah. After that, ask the patient to abduct and adduct his arm. Yeah. That is chicken wing arm beat test, right? Yeah. Ask the patient to abduct his arm repeatedly, at least for the count of 30. After that, again, test. Yeah. If there is a weakness, then that means that is a decremental response. That is myasthenic gravis. Yeah. If there was a weakness initially, here the patient had a weakness initially. If you had asked the patient to do that, after that, again, if you had tested, the weakness would have gone. So there was mm -hmm. an incremental response. So that's how you will differentiate. You might not be able to elicit it very properly clinically in the patient, but still the examiner will get impressed that you know that this test need to be done in this patient. You need to show the examiner that you know to do this. That is important. Mm -hmm. It is important that you elicit that, right? So the examiner mm -hmm. should see that you are eliciting it. Okay, so that test should have been done. One is for seeing for any fatigable tosis and one more is for proximal muscle weakness to see for any fatigability to see whether it is decremental or incremental response in the weakness. Right? Mm -hmm. That test you missed. Okay, so the first uh, differential here should have been the lens. Second, myasthenic gravis. Third, polymyositis. Dermatomyositis. Down the line, botulism can also be said because it presents same like our lens patient presents. Though it is unlikely here. Mm. Right? But still down the line you can give that differential. Mm. Okay. So the examination sequence means the re complete respiratory system examination was not needed. Okay. Then these two tests was something that you should have done. Okay. Mm. Then other than that when it comes to management. Okay. Investigation you know you said about chest x-ray. You said about routine blood investigation. Other than that, you can do repetitive nerve stimulation test that is specific, right? It tells you about the incremental or decremental response. It helps you differentiate the myasthenic gravis from lens. So that is an important test, right? Okay, that is chest x-ray and if needed, HRCT or a CT scan of the chest to see for the malignancy, right? When it comes to management, the treatment option always tell in terms of multidisciplinary team approach. For example, in this patient, we'll refer the patient to the pulmonologist right we'll refer the mm. patient to the neurologist right we'll refer the patient mm. to the cardiothoracic surgeon also right 
So, mm -hmm. and you will also refer the patient one more thing. What do the patient work here? What is the patient's job? No, I should, uh, you you I missed to ask. That, right? You ask should have asked. Okay. okay, the patient was a truck driver here, lorry driver. So mm -hmm. the symptoms were affecting his job. So you missed on to that. So you might lose the marks again in the communication, right? So that is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the test we do for uh, this thing for lambs is the test is usually for myasthenic gravis, not lambs. So whenever the patient is having lambs, the first one more differential would be myasthenic gravis. So for myasthenic gravis, one is you see for fatigability, that is drooping of the eyelid. Right? You ask the patient to look up at least for 20 seconds. You can ask the patient to look up and you yourself can count 1, 2, 3, 4 till 20 and see if there is there any drooping of the eyelids. So that tells you that the patient is having fatigable ptosis, which is classically seen in myasthenic gravis patient. Second test is the test to elicit the fatigability in the proximal muscle weakness. First check for the proximal muscle weakness. Right, the patient might be having a normal power. After that, ask the patient to abduct and adduct his arms at least for 30 seconds. After that, again elicit for proximal muscle weakness. At that time, you can notice a fatigable no. At that time, you can notice a weakness which was not there initially. So, these two tests you have to elicit in your exams for the myasthenic gravis patient. Even though you are getting a patient of limbs, make sure that you do these two tests in the examination in the physical examination because myasthenic gravis is your one of the differential diagnosis. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, you will have a multidisciplinary team approach. You have to utter that term multidisciplinary team approach. So, they are not, see, this MRCP exam, basically they are testing the knowledge of a SHOs, right? Who is undergoing the training for the MRCP, the internal medical training. They don't want the knowledge of a specialist here. So, is the basic thing that you have to tell the examiner to pass the exam. They need You need not tell the exact treatment, exact treatment protocols, the newer treatment modalities that is it. No, they are not expecting all that. But the basic things you have to tell. So, here you will refer the patient to occupational therapist because the symptoms are affecting his job. Okay, that is one thing. You will refer the patient to the pulmonologist, neurologist, cardiothoracic surgeon. So, you will have a multidisciplinary team approach. Right? This is what you need to mention in the management plan. When the examiner asks you what would be the definitive treatment, the definitive treatment for the limbs would be treating the underlying cause, that is surgically removing the malignant growth. Right? Mm -hmm. That would be the definitive treatment. Right? Okay. So, that was uh, about this case. Uh, any doubts in this till now? Any other candidates, any other doubts you are having? Uh, yeah, hello. Yes, yes, doctor. Tell me. Hello. Yeah, so uh, I was actually confused about that why it is not polymyositis because um, uh, that is also a paraneoplastic thing and that also present in the same way. Like how do we differentiate between the Lambert-Eaton Lamb syndrome and the polymyositis here? Yes, polymyositis can also be the possibility here, but the weakness pattern that the polymyositis Polymyositis can just present with the proximal muscle weakness, right? But here the patient had a history that weakness goes on as the day goes off, right? The weakness goes off in the, during the evening hours. The patient has mostly weakness during the morning hours, right? And in the physical examination, if you are, if you had asked the patient to abduct and adduct his arm, and again you if you have, if you had, if you would have tested for the proximal muscle weakness, the weakness wouldn't have been there. If it was proxim uh, polymyositis, that weakness would have been there. Again, it is difficult clinically to elicit in the patient. For example, if they have made a surrogate to sit there and uh, act and would have asked him to act like a patient and it is not a real patient. In most of the center, it happens. It might not be a real patient. It might be a surrogate mm -hmm. acting there. So in that case, in few cases, it might be difficult to elicit. In that case, you can give it as a differentiate, right? So, so if it's I always... Say this... Yeah, yeah, yes, so no. sorry, yeah. Yes, go uh, on. No, go 
All right. So if I say this as a polymyositis and my management would be like, according to that, will I fail the station? Uh, because no, no, if you I will not fail the right. station. You will not fail the station. You will still get the full marks. That's what I told. Never ever tell you were present your case with one single clinical diagnosis, just with a history and physical examination. That is very difficult. right? Even in the clinical setup, we won't be able to tell one exact clinical diagnosis. Always tell in terms of differential diagnosis. You so can keep even reason... polymyositis here as your first mm -hmm. differential. Second differential okay. as lamps. Third differential as dermatomyositis. Four differentials as myasthenic gravis. So uh, is there a particular restriction that number of differential I should make? Like if I have only two, three differential. Try to keep that, it at okay? least three to four. Okay. Try to keep it three to four. If you're going to extend it, then if it is not related to that case, then the examiner might pick up that and try to ask you some tricky questions. That right. might happen. So make yeah. sure that you keep it as less as possible. And which is very unlikely, make sure that you keep it in the end. Okay. okay uh, another, the question, mm -hmm. yeah, another question I have is, if I, I did this case and I made this type of differential of polymyositis as okay. my top one, then my management would involve a lot of steroids and DMARs. Will that become a problem? Because you said that uh, you, you don't require any specialist treatment, uh, specialist yeah, level yeah. treatment. Mm -hmm. That would not be a problem because still, see, uh, even the examiner who is coming there, even he won't be knowing the exact diagnosis of the patient. The Both the examiner also will go, take the history from the patient or the surrogate, and they both will sit and decide what all can be the possibilities. One candidate can present it as lens still would clear the station. Another candidate mm -hmm. presenting as polymyositis, polymyositis can still clear the station. To one candidate, the examiner can ask question about lens. To other candidate, the examiner will ask the questions of polymyositis. Both can be correct. Until and unless you have a proper history which specifically tells you that no, it is polymyositis and not lens and it's proper clinical findings. In that case, they might consider that. If it is not then it's, it's okay. You can present it as either polymyositis or lems as well. It depends right. on how they cases, have kept the case. Yeah. Okay. And in both cases, I have to tell the patient about what it is, you know, uh, like uh, educate him about what yes, the disease is Yes, you have to educate about. the patient. Patient well, counseling and education is very important. That is something you can tell when the examiner asks you, how will you treat the patient? The first sentence should be educating and Counseling and educating the patient about the condition. That should be your first sentence in all the stations. Mostly in the clinical consultation. That should be the first sentence. Then go on to the other options. All right. For asking okay. something. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Yeah. Is there any other doubts? Any other candidates? If not, we'll end the session then. So when it comes to clinical consultation, make sure that you take a proper detailed history and you can divide your time period of 15 minutes into eight plus five plus two. So first eight minutes, keep it for history taking. Okay, next five minutes for your physical examination. Last two minutes to address the concern. Okay, and doesn't matter if you have finished, if you even if you are not finished your physical examination, when the examiner tells you, rings the bell that there is only two minutes left, directly go on to address the patient concern, even though you are not finished your physical examination, because there is a mark for addressing the clinical concerns, right? Addressing the concerns of the patient. It is important. If you are missing on addressing the concerns of the patient, you will lose marks. Okay, so make sure that last two minutes you give only for addressing the patient's concern. Okay, and if you can divide this time period into eight plus five plus two, it would be helpful. Okay, try to finish off the history taking in the first eight minutes itself. And as you go on to examine, when you are examining the patient itself, you can still go on talking to the patient. You can still take the history. Okay, in the initial, uh, when you're starting the station itself, you can tell to the patient that, is it okay if I go on to talk about your symptoms and along with that, I can also examine you. So the patient will say yes, right? So you can start your examination even at the sixth minute itself, but make sure that you cover up all the points in the history taking. Okay. Okay, so hope this session was helpful. 
So if there are no doubts uh, from any of the candidates, we'll end the session.